Hey, good morning. I want to start, dive right into day 16 of our coffee challenge. And I want to welcome you wherever you're at listening to this here live. I welcome everybody that's joining me here in this journey, in this process. I've been, you know, talking to a lot of you and looking at what's showing up. So today I thought I'd talk about the seven mistakes that people are making in this manifesting challenge or manifesting in general. And so why it's not working, um, you know, why does it work sometimes? Why does it not work other times? Why does it work on some of the things you really, really want and some things you could care less about? And so why is that happening? And, you know, really, there's been a lot of research done on this topic. And you hear a lot of people talking about manifesting. But at the end of the day, there's very few people that actually um, stay the course. And so let's talk about that. The very first thing I have discovered, I've seen it in my own life, I've seen it in others, the people that I work with, is consistency. You've got to be consistent. If you're not doing it on a daily basis, and when I say doing it, you know, some of the steps I unfold or, or roll out for you um, and sort of try to unravel, keep it super simple, um, then we aren't going to do it. We've got to be consistent and lack and then having that lack of discipline to keep yourself consistent is is also part of the problem and I'll get into that. And so it's being consistent, staying on course. I committed to being committed to my exercise. That's part of my goal. It's not the one incredible thing that I'm focusing on, but it is an integral part of me staying the course and committed to me. So, um, you know, and a lot of times it's what it's that lack of consistency that literally kills your momentum and kills the vibration, the frequency that you're building. You know, I often say when we're when I'm doing the one on one work with people is being consistent, having a consistent practice, having consistent clearings is what's building our energy field so that the universe knows, oh, yeah, you're really serious. OK, so that's one thing. The second thing I've noticed is people tend to focus on what they don't want. So I'm, 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 I'm guilty of that myself. Sometimes I, when I first started this challenge, you know, I was perplexed. What do I want to focus on? I had three things in mind, but and it took a little time for, for me to get clear. No, this is the one thing, because if I focused on one of the two of the other things, it diluted my attention. It diluted my momentum, right? I, I'm going to, you know, pick on you for a minute, Nicola. I was reflecting back when you thought, you know, you have, I don't know what your one incredible thing is, but I appreciate you sharing that you really wanted a priority for you was to get your cupboards in the kitchen um, painted. But that was an example of how you diverted your attention. It wasn't what you really wanted. Yeah, it was something burning inside you that it bugged you that it wasn't done, but it wasn't ultimately something that you really, really wanted. And so you were focusing on something that would distract you and it wasn't what you really wanted. Another thing is that we listen to news and we think, oh, I'm just reading a headline. You know, if you go on YouTube or Yahoo, I should say, you just read headlines and you think that's not affecting you. I'm sorry to say it is. And if you, you know, I have chosen to go to alternative sources to get some facts. Of course, we know we're in a world of rapid changes. And there's some part of us that sort of needs to keep some sense of awareness of what's going on. But at the same time, we have to really realize that that could divert our attention and, 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 and start to trigger fears of insecurities or focusing on creating something we don't want to happen right? If we don't want a particular law to be, come in place, that you're fighting against it, then guess what? Your energy is going to create what you don't want. So it gets to be tricky. So it's really important to just take a, a step back. What are you focusing on that you don't want? If you want a relationship and you're focusing on, well, I know what I don't want. I don't want a guy that doesn't show up or doesn't keep his word, or I don't want someone that's not interested in health and wellness. 
So that's focusing on what you don't want. That gives you an example. The third thing I've been witnessing is that people get really impatient and they don't, they're not trusting themselves. They're not trusting the process. And we've become so programmed for instant gratification. So it is something to be consistent and be patient. And you will recognize there is like you plant a seed for a tree and it's not going to show up immediately. You got to come back every single day and keep watering that seed. And when you're not expecting it, it will sprout. And then before you know it, you've got your tree. And then you get your fruit, probably the season or two later. So it does take a process of time. We need to learn and understand and give ourselves um, that practice of being patient. Uh, practicing at the grocery store with somebody that's got you know, fumbling with making payment, you know, um, and we talk about tools of how we can release some of that energy that that's generating impatience, right? So that's where we're mindful of how can we release it. The fourth thing I noticed is that people, the mistake people are making in their manifesting um, practice is they're not doing the work. They think that they, we've been sold a bill of goods, you know, you've heard the, you know, about the book, The Secret, if you haven't read it a few times, and, and there's a lot of gurus out there, and new age, you know, experts in the subject matter, and they think that you can just make a vision board, or you can just do the affirmations, and it will just produce, right? But you're not doing any preparatory work to prepare yourself for that outcome. So there is work to be done. You can't just sit back and think yourself towards the goal. It does require you get off your butt, take some steps, and to build a momentum towards whatever that goal might be. Also, I think vision boards are fantastic in helping us focus and have a visual. I think that's the purpose that they serve. However, when you got it filled with 20 things, what are you focusing on, right? Your, your, your consciousness is so overwhelmed with the options, it's, it's scattered. And so, yeah, you might manifest it in two or three years. But what if you could have manifested it in six months, if you would have dialed in and focused on on one thing? As a result, many of those other goals will manifest, but you took the step. The fifth thing that I noticed is um, the mistakes people are making in um, manifesting is they're not removing the obstacles they continue to make excuses for why something won't work. In other words, they will continue to go, well, well maybe, maybe it's self-sabotage in the sense of an imposter syndrome. You know, think I, I could not do that because I don't have the qualifications or I could never, like my own excuse of showing up here and speaking to you on the fly is that I don't have the skill set. I, I went to speaker training and I had a meltdown and that was, it's definitely not for me, right? And so maybe on a stage or in front of 20 people wasn't the best place for me to start. Right. So I created an obstacle and, and a story in my head of why I couldn't do it. Right. Um, was I not willing to do the prep work or maybe I was just pure so scrambled in so many directions and had so many interests that I couldn't get to my. Um, so those were creating obstacles. I didn't allow myself at that point, that story or that belief stopped me from perhaps exploring other options maybe um now we've got podcasts that are really uh you know viable way and that's how i started it this year because i kept getting a message that i needed to be more visible right and so that was nagging me well what does that mean so i started to do some research I pushed myself out the door and made a list of podcasts that I could be a guest. I made a list and believe me, 
when I say this, <laughs> I would contact, I'd look at some of these incredible podcasters and some of them really famous. And the little voice came up, oh no, you know, who am I? They wouldn't want me on their show. What, what can I contribute? And so I too heard those voices and I literally pushed myself to send the email and said, what do I have to lose by sending the email? So they can say no, they cannot respond, or they could say yes. And it could be an amazing opportunity, right? I could make a new friend. So I started to push myself. I did the steps. I did the research. And doing my research helped me to refine where I wanted to target. No, not that topic, maybe this topic. But seeing how other people were doing it. Um, I was reflecting on Penny and our story, how she discovered um, her path and finding her purpose was her goal. Getting over her depression actually was the first goal. Those were her obstacles. That was an energetic block. Those were resistances as I talk about it. Um, she wasn't able to take steps. She wasn't able to be consistent or do the practice. And so, but when we identified the real core issue, then she started to research. What did she do? It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to do a research subject like some of our experts, like Dr. Rebecca shared. No, she started interviewing chefs, executive chefs at uh, five-star hotels. And so that was her journey of exploring what it might be like to build a business, to be a chef or to be a pastry chef, whatever. She was interviewing for her own um, ideas to get a feel for it, to, to, to sort of absorb it. And one step led to another. Then she allowed herself to explore the schools because she realized she wanted more training. She realized she wanted to explore, you know, and, and she refined it to French paste, French cooking. Then it came down from a broad range of cooking to just pastries. So that's her process of researching and discovering. She allowed herself to explore. So a lot of people don't allow themselves that. They, they stop themselves with, oh, no, I could not do that. Or it's just going to take too much work. Or I don't know anything about that. I'm not good enough. So all those stories we tell ourselves. The sixth mistake that people are making is they're not taking the action. So as I explained with Penny, she literally rolled up her sleeves, made herself, she knew she had some connections. So she had some friendly, warm connections. She had some friends introduce her once she started to share what her goal was. So we talked about that earlier in the week. Be careful who you share your goals with. Those were people that she could trust and encouraged her idea right? To explore it. Somebody on the other side might say, oh, what a dumb idea. Now you'll, you're right. You could never do that. So you want to be careful. She had a support system. They encouraged that and, and it warmed her up to taking those steps. And, you know, they were baby steps. She didn't um, start with a whole business plan. She didn't actually start with the business name and start with marketing material. No, she immersed herself in the process. Yeah. So the final mistake that I see people make is not acknowledging their successes. So along the way, you've heard me say, what are you noticing different? So it's a prompt for us to recognize something is shifting, right? So you're, it's a win. It's, it's, it's a takeaway. And it's the universe giving you a sign that you're on the right path. A lot of people talk about angel numbers. If you see 1111 or 777 or 222, you know, people say, well, what does it mean? Well, there's, you know, you can go to Google and you can get the absolute interpretation from someone else, or you can just go into meditation or chalk it up to, you know what? I keep seeing that pattern. It may be a pattern of numbers, or it may be a pattern of feathers, it may be a pattern of red cars, I don't know, or a particular sign on the road. I keep seeing give, 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 or I keep seeing, you know, um, smile, smile, smile. Okay, but those are indicators that you're being validated, you're doing the right thing. 
You might have doors start opening for you. Opportunities show up. You may have a friend that all of a sudden says, oh, you wanted to turn that, that script into a movie? All of a sudden you're introduced to a movie producer. So we need to acknowledge those wins. And even if it's as small as, you know what? I've got more energy today. I am more focused. I am more inspired and motivated. That's a win. That's a success. That's an achievement and the universe conspiring because you're, you're, you're clear, you're clearing the obstacles, um, not only mentally, but emotionally and energetically or spiritually. And so we, it, we, it, it's really important to acknowledge those along our path and to know that you are doing a good job. You know, you did get up every morning and go for your walk the last couple months, Mira. You did do that. You know, you made some new friends on the path because you did that, right? You're acknowledging nature and the abundance around you. And I'm setting a tone for myself, right? That's a win. So, um, and that inspires the universe to bring more down the pike because you're committed and your your vibration is shifting, your attitude is shifting, you'll get new ideas. So keep in mind in, in manifesting that your job is to declare what you want, be crystal clear. And I work with many people that don't know what they want. And I understand that. That's where we start with clearing your energy. It takes me sometimes. And, and our, our goals change over time, but declaring what it is you want, being specific. Then our, goal, our, our job is to train our body, mind, and spirit. That's what our thoughts are thinking, taking the action, and focusing on the energetics aspect of it, resetting it for ourselves, setting ourselves up for the best possible outcomes. The third job you have is to be patient, to be patient that all the work you're doing as you're investing in yourself and your incredible goals is to be patient. The universe will deliver. Also, your job is to remove the obstacles. What thoughts are you repeating or telling yourself that are made up or maybe something that you started to, you decided when you were five years old? that you couldn't do that or family people in our you know circumstances don't obtain a phd or we don't make a lot of money we're just content living in a mediocre way whatever the stories are your job is to remove those obstacles and clear the path the the your job is the number fifth thing is to remove or pardon me to take the action take the steps do something different was one of my mantras over the last few weeks is what can you do different? What will inspire more motivation or the universe to say you're serious about what you are? What, what steps can you take towards your goal today? Now, if you have a big goal, you might not be able to achieve it all right now, but what are the small steps that lead into the fulfillment of that dream of that goal? And then the sixth step that you need to do is start taking those steps. You know, when you decide that you need to take the steps, then start doing it. You know, I needed to be more visible. I took the steps. I researched. I got a list. I created a list. Then I had to send the emails. So it didn't happen immediately, did it? It took some time. It took maybe several weeks. And when I just made it a mission of sending out 20 emails a day, you know what? Within a couple of days, I got responses. Some of them I had to follow up, but I kept that pattern, that cycle filling. And then the seventh thing that your job in manifesting is to acknowledge. Acknowledge that you're making progress, that you've taken the steps, that you're releasing the energy, you're committing to yourself, you're doing your practice, and there are things that are showing up. And so acknowledge the energy difference. I always start with, how are you sleeping different? What are you noticing in terms of your physical well-being? Check the box. How are you feeling? How are you thinking different? Are you more optimistic? 
have some, you've started receiving compliments or people outside of yourself started noticing there's something different about you. And then the final thing is, of course, the mile markers thanking the universe, you know, and acknowledging it, the, the mile markers or the successes, what's different is thanking the universe, thanking God, whatever's that part of you to acknowledge your higher self, you're doing it. And you've got the support. The universe has got your back, right? So all that to say, you know, I think you're doing an amazing job being here, listening to this and recognizing when we pull it back, where, what might you be tripping yourself up and where can you refine your process? I think it's a constant pass, you know, process of, you know, keeping ourselves on track and recorrecting a constant process so don't beat yourself up for sure but recognize what can I do different how can I improve this how can I adjust the way I'm doing it or thinking or uh, reacting throughout my day to break my cycle to break my pattern yeah so with that I need a sip of coffee how are you doing? I'd like to welcome anybody who wants to share and contribute, uh, comment on maybe some mistakes you've witnessed or that you've been noticing along your path um, and uh, what you're noticing different. I think you're muted. Yeah, go ahead. Welcome. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> Hi. And Carly sure chimed in. She was poking her little nose in here and she must hear my voice and want to come and, and visit, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, she's quite affectionate and wants to be part of everything I do. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. She's a great support, isn't she? She is. She is. <laughs> um, she goes, Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> You know, one of the things you said is, is something different. Are you getting more compliments? So it, oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that. I'm getting them more. So that's just really cool. Uh, what are people noticing different? What are they saying? Uh, well, the thing is, the where I'm getting compliments is at my job. And um, so, you know, there's something that... Um, I guess I did before I met you, but um, it was that I wanted to, uh, when I lost my job, I wanted to get another one, you know, so I went and started my own business. And almost right away, I started getting calls. <clears throat> but the one that I'm most um, invested in, they said to me yesterday, not, not Thursday, that they, in front of everybody, the owner said, I thank God every day for Nikki, for Nicola. So I've never heard that. That is ever. so fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's incredible. You've never heard that. No, never. That's massive. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Good for you. You are amazing. <laughs> Okay. It's just <clears throat> how did you feel when he said that? Well, it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I felt a little embarrassed, like, oh, you know. <laughs> but I interesting. Took it in. So uh, you know, I'm sorry to just sort of pick on you here, but when you went, <clears throat> oh, that would be an indicator of you not being able to receive exactly. the love and the support and the validation. Yeah. And it was uncomfortable because you're not used to it. Exactly. I've always so tell had, me the rest. Tell me what else. Oh, oh, they went, oh, yes, Nikki's great. You know, and all this. Anyway, so I, I just didn't say anything. I just smiled, you know. I just I had to process that. So, um, and it's so different about all my life up until this point. <clears throat> I felt that I really had to earn love and respect by doing, and, and I, I really worked hard and all of this. And 
it did not change anything inside me. I mean, it felt nice, but what it didn't do was make me feel uh, more love. So that was interesting because I have to feel that love to get that love. It's just, I know it's mind blowing, isn't it? When you, well, I really appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing that because this is so common. Yeah. So often that we're just not, we say we want love and respect and support, but yet you demonstrated to yourself that you created it and the universe wants to give it to you, but you balked. It was so overwhelming. It's new, of course. So we have to practice. Okay, how could you respond next time? Well, um, what I did internally was say thank you inside myself, you know. So differently, it's just what I've done since then <clears throat> is I keep telling myself that I'm worthy of love that I am love and that love flows to me. And, I, and that's one reason why I think I met you is because I was looking for other people's experience of love. Right. Real no, love. We, we don't know what we're missing or how that will feel, do we? Yeah. So we're trying to internalize it and picture it. Well, I think that's really profound. And I think um, You, you know, I think as you s sit with that new feeling and all the giddiness and the joy that it brings and the awareness and, oh, my God, humbling to think you've been chasing it. And here it is because it wasn't on your radar. It wasn't even something that you were really looking to create. Right. That wasn't your one incredible thing. But you've been showing up different. People are responding different. And as a result they're telling you now they're reflecting it back to you and you're like <laughs> <laughs> can't take it you know and so we we have to then go through the process of raising that having this gauge or that meter to saying you know what i can have more of this i'll feel as i tasted it i can have some more now and so next time instead of just internal vo voicing it you can say thank you that means so much to me. I really appreciate that. You have no idea how much that means to me. You know, when we can start heartfelt sharing, that's huge. And then there will be more and there are more and more and more will come. But it's us that has to get comfortable with that internal dialogue, right? Right. And it's interesting to me that right after that, when I had that meditation, <clears throat> that um, it's number five. I kept doing it over and over again, but at one point, I think it was my third or fourth time, um, I visualized, or in my visualization and dream state, um, after the meditation uh, segment, like appeared before me, and this lion, this male lion, went into my heart. And I, oh, oh okay. It's a male lion. Wow. And then she put her forehead on mine. And then another lion came into my heart. It was a female lion. I said, I wonder if that means what that means entirely. But it felt it, it felt like courage of the masculine and feminine. And it just it was really a beautiful feeling that I got after it. I just felt so much love and peace and everything. That's fantastic. You know, it's, it's interesting because that's one of the steps that we do in my life mastery is the integration of the female and the masculine energies that we all have. And it's creating that balance and recognizing how and when to use the masculine. And, you know, many of us females have really got an imbalance. Uh, well, males do too, but we've really been pushing that masculine energy much harder and further and the doing and the action. And, and then, then it's like, there's a confusion. Most of us are confused how and where it's appropriate and how, how in a female body are we running more masculine energy is disruptive to the feminine space. Yeah. So there's a time and a place, but when we get that balance off kilter, then um, 
that's where things go haywire, right? And so it's a very subtle, it's more, you're doing some advanced work, Nicola. So congratulations. You know, working with Sekhmet is, is a very powerful step. There is no going back, <laughs> um, you know, and she will, she's relentless, you know, talking about the courage and the power and the strength. Now, Sekhmet, you know, the goddess of, she was in my mind and heart, she is the goddess, the healer of all healers. She works with me very strongly. And um, she's got a reputation for destruction. And when she gets, she, when the story goes, when she gets mad or violent, you know, she was known as the goddess of the plague. She brings on fire and brimstone, so to speak, hell on earth. I don't subscribe to her that way, but one thing for sure is Sekhmet motivates us to take action because action, action is a masculine vibration. We need that force, that energy of push sometimes to get through some of our procrastination, right? And or wherever our blocks are. Sometimes that's what we need. I needed that energy to push me to reach out to podcaster. I needed that energy, that momentum when I started this, okay, let's just launch. Let's just do it. It's going to be messy, this 90-day challenge. I didn't know how it was going to be. I made it up as we went. I appreciate everybody's patience and, and you know, just, you know, with the links and all that when we first started. But I didn't know. All I knew is we needed to push through our resistances, our blocks. So that's the masculine energy, right? It's funny how we needed that push to then come back and receive and to be in this center of our power, which is knowingness of that balance of the female, feminine, and masculine energy. That's where true power is. And, and in the heart, I find that interesting because I've been on the journey of, you know, connecting mind and heart. We talk about the little gold ball exercise and rolling that down into our heart. So it's speaking and connecting intellectually from a heart space. How can we be more present and aware and conscious without giving away our power or, or you know, steamrolling over other people? or just over analyzing and intellectualizing without those feelings. And so we're in this process. I think humanity, you know, we're seeing a lot of destructive situations going on in all of our aspects of society, but that is pushing us closer to bringing in that balanced male and feminine energy, that integrative body, mind, spirit. And, and the consciousness, raising the vibration, the consciousness on the planet. But again, it all starts here. It all starts with me. It starts with you. We have to do our work. If we don't do the work, there is no magic bullet. There is no magic vision board that's going to transpire. We've got to walk through the steps. Segment, we walk through the fire, you know, that transmutation, that alchemical process requires everything that I'm talking about. We're making it super simple with this manifesting challenge and diving into the exercises that are super, they're the spark that will light your turbo blaster, okay? <laughs> and, and so I don't know how else to say it, but they are the spark. Now, I didn't give all the intellectual how-tos and all that. We can talk about that individually if and when you're ready. It wasn't the attention or the agenda. So, uh, yeah, so I don't know if I'm so sorry that if I've um, um, sort of disrupted your train of thought, please, please. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. Well, no, it's, it's real good input. <laughs> Well, yeah so I'm, yeah I'm be, being able to be receptive to that receiving right. it is so huge you've been giving the time you've been giving the commitment you've been dedicated to your practice you were consistent you were patient you yeah. did all of those things and i'm continuing to explore different ways to stay present and um and ways to do your business yes and potentials and you're getting new ideas uh, well, new I, things are popping. okay 
I, I, um, sorry, am I, am I, am I seeing things I shouldn't be sharing? <laughs> no, actually, this was exactly happening yesterday. I'm going to put her down. I'm seeing that around you in your energy field. Sorry for peeking. <laughs> That's okay. I, um, I, uh, sent out, uh, I got my first, um, FedEx account and I sent out, um, five products to a, a lady who thinks she can sell it to all her clients. And she said she wants more. And I didn't know for sure that she wanted to have more. <laughs> she, um, right. I did People not say things you want to wait for them, her to really show really, up. But she yes, means it. Yeah. Exactly. That's so you're I'm building concerned. trust in your relationship yes. and, and building a consistency. That's a prudent, very prudent of you. Yes. And so um, I never really, I sent her about five different samples over the few years. And she said, well, I like them all. And they're all very different. <laughs> so it's hard to find what she really means by she likes them all. And, you know, it's just how so maybe, we are, I guess. <laughs> so. Well, I was just thinking out loud, if I may, is create a questionnaire. What does she okay. want to feel? I mean, come. I've, I've done that. People don't do that. They, oh. I, I've done that over and over and over. Okay. Okay. So um, I'm sorry, but that might be an obstacle because you've tried it in the past and it didn't work. Is oh. there, and, and I would ask yourself, is there another way? How can you get to her core what she's really looking for? You haven't answered what she's looking for you have to solve that for her you have to help her you're you're the Sherlock Holmes to <laughs> <Yes>. uncover <laughs> her um true need and I also got a call from someone else who wanted to have a product that I don't make and I said I just said I referred her to an investor and I said when you're ready to come to my expertise, let me know. And I was telling that to my major uh, customer yesterday, and he said, "We've got to talk." <laughs> so this, there's a lot of potential happening, uh, a lot of momentum, and I am not going to slow down. I'm going to oh, get. Oh, that's so fantastic! I am so proud of you. Into I'm, this. I'm so I, proud of you. Well, and I think that's the magic of it, right? And the right. more you open yourself up to possibilities and obstacles and letting those go, dissolving them, and through our work that we're doing, we're literally clearing away those stories that we keep telling. Now, perhaps that client that just doesn't know what she wants, maybe she's not your perfect candidate or client, well, right? Maybe she's just going to keep circling around and, you know, maybe you need to spend your energy somewhere else instead of falling into her trap. Well, actually, so setting gave, boundaries, gave, right? Gave, setting the healthy boundaries. Yes, you just gave me an idea. Oh, I did, did I? Yes. <laughs> what, What's that? It's that about the questionnaire. I could send it to her after. I said, how do you like, what do you like about it? In other words, there like a survey. Yeah. You're more willing to fill out surveys than how do you want to proceed and all that? <laughs> right. No, 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 no. Questionnaire, meaning how do you rate this from one to 10? Yes. Or how does this, how does this make you feel from one to 10? How does this, um, what does this trigger in your mind from one to 10? That would be what I would, or yeah. with products, when you send it out, that might be, but now you can do it now. Because oh, it'll help you get more clear of oh she loved that it just reminded her of her grandmother's you know I don't know apple pie yes exactly and that's actually how I'm going to be doing it from now on with all of my customers see that's a win thank you yeah thank you <laughs> well that's what I mean we haven't solved her real issue what she's really looking for so again, you, you know, uh, uh, thanks for being vulnerable because you presented it. Oh no, can't do that. Can't do that. But that's an unconscious energy that was kind of just stopping the door from getting the floodgate open. Yeah. <laughs> Got to do it a different way. 
call it a different word, you know, like me as a speaker on a stage wasn't working at the time. And that was like 10 years ago, but podcasts, I can sit here and have a cup of coffee with you and chat and talk and make a video. Okay, cool. Yeah. You know, and that's easier for me. So everybody's at their stage wherever they're at. I like it better because when I'm in an audience and the person's giving a lecture, including Patricia Cota Robles, who was amazing. You're right. I felt uh, less than. Well, and that's it it has it does it there's no exchange whatsoever and there's no uh, there's no exchange, no feeling of I I just I am in a receiving mode. If I have a question, I have to line up at the end you know, with a million other people. I mean, I've never really enjoyed those. Right. Well, and I've gone through, you know, I know Patricia Cota Robles and, and uh, you know, there you could just Sylvia Brown, you're, you know, over the years, there's been a lot of varying types of those type of presenters, especially in the spiritual world. And you're right, but just going to a conference or a talk like that, there is a separation from the speaker yeah. and the audience. And yeah. often now a lot of them don't make themselves available unless they're signing a book, right. To, to speak to you. But I think we're in a new era, you know, also when I would listen to her, Patricia, I, it, I would zone out. She's tra- <laughs> cha- channeling, she's channeling such high vibration yeah. energy. Yes. And I think that's typical of a lot of channels. Um, you know, I, Cryon was in the same neighborhood as as I was. Um, uh, Ashtar was another one. And so what can I say? I don't want to minimize their work in any way, but I recognize that my mission and my purpose is to help people be present. And there's so much information. When you start coming into alignment, you're going to get your own information. You're going to get your own channeled message and then have to trust that it's genuine or true. And that's our journey. I believe that's the next step. And so listening to somebody else's information isn't always the best approach for you to manifest and or how are you creating your life? Yeah. And if it keeps knocking you out, how can you manifest what you're supposed to manifest? I mean, that's just kind of a a crazy loop to me. So that's where I kind of sideline. Yes, they're incredible work, light workers. Yes, they've got incredible information. But how is it relevant to here and now? Because all of that information, it's no, no different than... And I don't know why I do this when I'm sitting here, but there's something about the information that's coming through that's tickling my nose. (laughs) So I noticed that when I was watching some replays, but so uh, there's something about the channelers that we want information. We want to know there's hope. We want to know what's coming, but that is a distraction. That's not helping us focus on what we need to focus on. It's no different than listening to the news. It's no different than watching and, you know, if it's inspiring to take a step in what you need to do, then okay, but I don't know. I don't know. It seems to be overwhelming to me when I listen to them. Right? Don't, don't, don't you get anxious and a little overwhelmed? And it's like, I, I, I don't know how I, I it, it was a while back when I went to one of <clears throat> her um, uh, conferences on elimination. And it's as long as she was talking or any of her other guest speakers, I was asleep uh, in my chair, sitting up constantly asleep. And it was just, it bothered me <laughs> that I couldn't be present. But later on, I met some amazing people in, in the lobby and uh, that inspired me and it made me feel um, a sense of belonging. And that was important to me. So, but I, I really, I really get that because so, it's never really worked on my on my everyday life. Right. And I got to tell you, my sister said something to me the other day, well, actually a couple of years ago, and that's always stuck with me. So heavenly focused and no earthly good. So, 
he says, well, that's when you're floating up here and you're not really present. You're not in your body. You're not doing the work. You know, so that's, it's good to have that information. Absolutely. That healing. And then you can, it helps get me courage to, to know that there is no real death, that I don't have to be afraid. And it gives me courage. So that part is very important to me, but it's more important, actually as important, to be here and to be present. And you're helping me do that. Oh, I'm so glad because again, that was my biggest message with my near-death experience. And I don't believe you have to have a near-death to to do yeah. this. But I know that more and more people sharing their stories over the last few years is astounding. Yeah. Right. And it has encouraged me to share my story. But more than anything, it's helped me remember what was the what was the core message of my my experience was that I was creating my own shitty life. Yeah. I created my success too. And how did I do that? How was I a train wreck in some parts of my life and avoiding in others and, you know, a dynamo in others? How was I doing that? It was all emotional, mental and energetic. And so when I saw the timeline and how I did that and that then I, my mission was, let's fix it. Okay. okay. I got the snapshot. I get it. Now to change the course of the train wreck and, you know, turn the dumpster fire into, you know, paradise. Yeah. How do I do that? And so that's, I believe, all, our ultimate mission here on earth. I and agree. that's why we are so blessed having this physical human body yes. because it's, it is, it is a bitch. It is hard. It is really, really hard. Yeah. I've had my my pity parties. Yes, I've stamped and stormed and cursed out, you know, <laughs> the creator for the mess I was in yeah. at certain times, but that didn't get me out of it. I had to push through that energy. I had to do something different. I had to take some action. I had to focus on where I wanted to be, focusing on the step I was in. Those are all the things that I've been pushed towards and really most of us have never been taught how to celebrate our successes, yeah, yeah. you know? So I really want to bring that around to you sharing your success and how people are witnessing and yeah. sharing and, and in your face now, Yeah, <laughs> what a great job you're doing. Yeah. It, it, what, what's also um, um, an aha moment or a revelation moment is that I don't have to look like a movie star and be you know 90 pounds and be athletic and all of that other stuff <laughs> yeah to, to have someone really celebrate me and I'm like whoa yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and 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 really shine yeah. and you know I really am reflecting back on what you shared about being in these conferences with these very enlightened amazing uh light workers is that you were, the energy was so high that they're channeling and you being an empath that literally knocked your spirit out of your body. So you couldn't even absorb what they were saying because you were matching them. Your incredibleness was talking to them at a whole nother dimension. Your spirit left. You were exploring all of that amazingness in, in another dimension. And so you left your body. And a lot of empaths do that. So naturally, you're a natural healer, you're a natural channel, channel. And for those of us that are that, it's hard for us to stay present because it's so easy and wonderful. And and what a great escape, you know? So we it, literally what's happening is your spirit, your presence, your conscious awareness has left the body. And so that's why you couldn't internalize. So for you to go out in the corridor and the back room and connect and talk to people, you were forced to come into the body and be yeah. present. Yeah. And that's where it was meaningful. Yes, See, it was. You proved it to yourself. You go, <laughs> wow, this is what I want. I want human to human, spirit to spirit connection. Yes, I did. Aren't we silly well, humans? Aren't we just amazing? <laughs> actually, you know, that's right. I, I really took in 
to my heart what you said about having fun along the way. That even when we when things don't seem to be working out, like traffic a traffic jam or whatever, I just I love how you said to be present, to have fun, and uh, you can ground other people in their cars. You can ground <laughs> that really works for me. Even though it took me two hours to get home, I I was okay. <laughs> you know, I wasn't judgmental. I wasn't going for me. None of that. It just that I'm grateful to be safe and get home and have something to eat and have my kitties welcome me. <laughs> so just, yeah. And so what happens is you were raising your vibration. So you don't come home so depleted and like, oh God, just, you know, give me a drive through, you know, flips for <laughs> dinner. Or, you know, you have the energy to think, you know what, I want to be good to my body. So I'm going to have a salad and some, you know, healthy chicken, or I'm going to create something because I still have some energy. And well, a lot of times we don't think there. like that. You just go, what? I'm getting there. Um, that's well, one dishwasher. step at a time, one that's step at a time, you know, that's the point is validating the steps that you, the win. Yeah. And that's, that's good. You noticed it was different and uh, it made a difference because you were different. I felt different. I, I, it was, even though there was some really scary parts <laughs> of that drive, I was, um, I felt safe, you know, even though. And I got around that. I said, normally, I think I would have been really upset about the way so the trip was. You know? When <laughs> we're grounded, it helps the body feel safe. Yes, it does. <laughs> and and when did. we're grounded, it's an easy way to release any energy that's coming at us. So when there's sparks of like fight or flight, when you hit like a close call driving, you're more easily able to just release that. It goes through the body and, and discharges versus hanging on to it and coming home and, oh my God, I could have died. And it could have been like this. And oh my gosh, you know, and on and on and on and on. It literally eats us up. And then what we do is we reproduce those types of situations. So it keeps us in that high level of stress and that fight or flight and we and then you have a panic attack or every time you got to get in the car you end up going into that place you know, that something's going to happen and you end up creating all that cycle <laughs> well it just it really helped me about the grounding i gotta tell you that grounding is so important because right after that when i did that grounding and um drove a little bit further i i took an alternate route because there was another huge wreck in front so i took another route and then i found a way to get to a park that i wanted to visit <laughs> oh that's where that is you know so because i need to to uh all right one of my goals in uh, honoring myself is to be in nature and to walk in nature and so i was looking for other places to do my walk and i found it and i mean i found the way it's this afternoon it's my goal to go over there great <laughs> you're taking steps you're taking action you're allowing yourself to explore and that's fantastic i love hearing that yeah and it's only through some of those trial and error let's see what we get you know you're going to discover something even more yeah thrilling yeah it's a river park and i wanted to be near a river so. and i didn't even know it existed <laughs> See, isn't that fantastic? Good for yeah. you. I love that. Something more to look forward to. Yeah, I'm going to go at that. And see, that's your fun, right? Yes. That's that's your play. Yeah. <laughs> Every day when I go on my walk, I like, was like, what little animal am I going to see today? And the, I love the, the cardinals, but they haven't been out. And I, I find this interesting. When I was doing the virtual groups, the cardinals were flocking around me. It was amazing. I'd go, I could, one day I, I remember counting like 20 cardinals. Now I don't see one. And I know they're still around. I'm hearing them. But I, the other day, I, I, I was looking, I said, okay, what little animal am I going to see today? And literally I saw a rabbit that was really healthy he was a big guy and he was he was all speckled 
usually a rabbit is like a solid color of beige or or tan but this rabbit he was all modeled like like he would blend right in with the fall colors right uh -huh. and he and he stood right there and he was like four feet from me uh -huh. and he stood there for the longest time and you know the native americans the symbols are fear and um and noticing and also there's a gentleness and there's other meanings but i stood and i looked at him he wasn't afraid of me and i wasn't afraid of him and i had that notion what are you afraid of amira just look at it straight in the face just go right into it don't run from it and so that's what my little takeaway from my walk yeah the other day so, you know, that's my little psychic game. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's great fun how, how creative we really are and how our spirit is giving us signs and symbols and how important it is to validate. So that was a big part of my motivation to do these live sessions is to inspire you to look for what's different. A lot of times we get so caught up in our day, we don't think about like you said, oh, I am getting compliments. Gee, you know, you were so quick to dismiss it. Yeah. And so, and, or I need to practice or I need to give myself a commitment and I want to commit to it. And so by me committing, I know it's inspiring, hopefully the energy vibration for you to commit to you and pushing through our own obstacles, you know, to getting it. So so was was there anything else that you wanted to say today? No, <clears throat> I'm just uh, <clears throat> looking forward to, to actually getting my one incredible thing. Yeah, now it's coming. So. Yes, yes. Well, again, being patient and trusting, right? And believing it's coming. And, you know, it can even modify or change, but it, it it's showing up. And I will, I know for sure it is. So I was, uh, I will see you again tomorrow for the live if you're able to join me. Thank you, everybody, for, hey, leave a comment on, on my YouTube channel. If this timing isn't working for you, but you want to connect with me or share what you're noticing in your practice, because I know there's a ton of you that have signed up for this challenge. I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to hear what you're noticing different. And hey, talk, tell me about your obstacles too, because you know what? By by identifying them and pushing through them, then we can solve it and move, move past to invite that one incredible thing a little bit closer. So anyway, here's to this. Have a great weekend and I'll look forward to seeing you real soon. And in the meantime, let's create miracles.